Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Sparks from CCG Discussions coming at you with my Androids deck profile. Um, so I wanted to bring some off-meta stuff to the channel just because, um, you know, droids and Goku Black and whatnot. Uh, you've seen my Brawly list a lot and how to play Brawly. I've been big into him since day one. But um, this deck in particular kind of caught my eye and interest because there's some value in it that I think that, like, you kind of miss in both Gohan and Brawly. Um, and... It's uh, it's not really clear um, which of these decks between the three of them are the strongest. Um, I think Droids actually beats the other green decks, but struggles into faster decks. So I'd say that like its weakness would kind of be like a Goku Black if they go second. Uh, because actually I've worked the math about that for about six hours. I can tell you that Goku Black and Droids, whoever goes second wins that matchup. Um, then the, uh, the, but when it comes to like Ginyu, that can be kind of, uh, strong. Um, uh, Frieza, it can be kind of strong, but the reality is, is that if droids stabilize, um, they just decimate everybody. Um, and so it's like one of those things where it's like, extreme precision and pilot error that will be the downfall of you so this deck is a deck that is not for the faint of heart i'm just going to say that right now this is probably the hardest of any of the decks that are what like of the green decks by far it's the strongest um when piloted correctly but the hardest to pilot correctly by a long shot there's lots of things that you have to consider and we'll talk about as we get into the profile um, but hey, I got the right energy marker with it this time, but it's not gold. So nobody, nobody counts that. But, um, anyway, uh, let's get into the profile and I will show you guys what I'm running. So on this side, attack, draw a card. And then, uh, when your life is a four less, uh, draw one card, flip it over on this card permanent. If you have six or more energy, this card gains 10,000 power. And we're going to talk about that with the ramp engine that we chose. Um, and it's really, that, that effect is really powerful. And then, um, when attacking, you draw a card. So, uh, that's all to our, our, our droid leader, but, uh, simultaneously, there is a lot of skill intensity and theory crafting, especially into this list that I went into. So I'm excited to bring it to you guys. Uh, let's start off with our cantrips. We play four Sun Goku and four Android 20. Now, um, a lot of people will uh, probably question the Android 20, but it's good for two reasons. One, it searches out probably arguably the best late game card, which is the SR20, uh, SR20, the SR18, because uh, this card only searches for 17s and 18s, and we only play two, uh, technically three targets in the deck that it can really hit. But simultaneously, um, it's a cantrip. If it hits, it's really strong, and and to top it off, it uh, does search us some of the strongest cards that we have in our deck. So um, it's worth it if you need to charge it or pitch it or combo with it. Like it's just not good to play. Like remember, these are only early turn cards. So if it's not going to be very beneficial for you to play, you don't have to play it. So. Uh, but we do max the consistency uh, of wanting to see our best cards. So that's why we chose to play this. And then uh, for Son Goku, because he's a cantrip that just draws a card. Both have 5k combo. Very good at helping get over, um, like, you know, uh, cheap 15k swings. And we'll talk about matchups you want to do that. Uh, next... For the Android 17s and 18s we play, we play only 417 and 418. And I know what you guys are going to say. You play, do you seriously play a cantrip that only searches eight cards? And the answer is yes. Uh, but these are the best, in my opinion, droids that you can be playing in the deck. Um, there is an argument to be playing the crit 17. Um, 
but the 18s are kind of lackluster in that regard. Uh, the like uh, the eight drop energy recycle 18, I'm not a very big fan of, and I'm not a very big fan of the uh, 18 that grabs a 17. We don't have any 17s to grab with that anyway. But what's really important about that 17 is that it grabs that 18. So these cards right here, I don't want you to even just think of them as um, like these 12. I don't want you to think of them as just this card searches these and this gets that, right? What I want you to look at is that that's a four cost Android, that's an Android, and that's an Android. And that'll come up here in a second. Because uh, our deck heavily relies on our field spell that basically gets, our, uh, gets us a huge amount of value. Um, but let's talk about these cards specifically. So Android 18, two cost, 20K, 5K combo. On play, draw one card, then discard one card from your hand. And if you have six or more energy when attacking, you draw a card. That effect right there is the reason we play four of her. And it's part of the reason why this card is even worth it. Because searching this card, like in the end, late game, when this card lives, you are getting massive amounts of cards. This card also grabs this card from the drop. So what does he do? He is a four drop 20k. So he can, both of these cards can challenge Awakened Leaders. They also challenge 15k criticals, which is really important. And then you can add up to one card from your life to your hand, then play up to one Android 18 with a cost of three or less from your drop. So if you've comboed her, you can play him, grab her, take life. So we have a little bit of self-awakening in the deck, which is nice because honestly, that's like a struggle point for green in general. Uh, not that it matters because if you eventually get to Brawly, like, you know, look out until the cows come home, it's bad news. Uh, but that is really strong. Because getting two bodies for four energy is really good, especially one that filters and draws a card. And we can get to six energy extremely fast. Um, next, we play probably what a lot of people would say is a dead odd choice, which is the Android 20 that has an activate main. Um, you look at the top 10, you KO the card, and then you look at the top 10 cards and place a Jero's Laboratory uh, uh, into your battle area, and then you place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. This card is good for a number of reasons. This axe is eight copies of our field spell. Simultaneously, it is a three-cost android, which matters a lot for Vegeta and Turles. And to top it off, it is really, really strong as a 10k combo, so, uh, again, we will get value out of this card no matter where it is, whether it's in the drop, whether it's in our hand, whether we need to charge it, no matter what, we're going to get value out of the card. And it will all make sense when I show you this field spell. So, next we play arguably the reason to play this deck. If there is a reason to play this deck, it is probably this, and it is Dr. Uh, Jero's Lab. It's a field spell, and um, it has an activate main for one green. You switch this card to rest mode. If your leader is Android 17, add up to one card with Android and its special traits from your drop to your energy. That is any Android, okay? So the reason that these top, like, 16 cards are extremely valuable is that they are all Androids, which means when they go to the drop, they have an immense amount of value in your ramping. So every turn, you get a free ramp, and your energy remains the same. So you don't get the card active, but what you do get is guaranteed cycle of extra energy into your next turn. This is especially important, and this is where I think that this leader has slept on the most. This is especially important when you get to your other ramp pieces, which we'll talk about here in a second. Because if you have your other ramp pieces, this lab becomes insanely busted. Because you will be literally two energy ahead of your opponent every single turn you play a ramp card.
okay? I'm going to repeat what I just said. You will be two energy ahead of your opponent every single time you play a ramp card. And guys, I'm telling you, it's busted. It is not uncommon for you to have an absurd amount of energy. Like yesterday, the highest I think I had was 13. Could have went to 14, 15 if I wanted to. But like, that's, I mean, it is what it is. But I mean, that is the power of this deck. And when you understand the proper curve, we're going to leave the lab up at the top. You're going to really kind of see how it all kind of comes together. So um, let me set these aside real quick. We'll just leave the lab up there. And then we'll talk about our next two ramp pieces, Vegeta and good old Turles. So here is the thing, okay? These two cards are pretty much what make that card insanely broken. So you look at these beginning cards, Xing the um, Nixing the seventeen. You look at these beginning cards and you say, "Well, they're not that great inherently, but standalone, they're not terrible either." But when you ex Nixing the Sun Goku because he can't be ramped, but looking at the rest of these cards, okay, what do you see? Just think about it for a second. You see now 16 cards that fill into this, and that's not all the androids that we play. But that's 16 cards that fit in Jero's lab. Android 18 is a draw a card, pitch a card. So when she draws a card, you can set up your Jero's lab by getting rid of this cantrip, which is where it gets value. Against crit leaders, they're 20 crits, if Jero's Lab is in your hand already, can be free comboed out of this because it doesn't matter that you lose the combo here, right? What matters is that this is now another card into your drop for Jero's Lab. But simultaneously, these four meet the requirements for those two. So you have an insane amount of synergy that you have to basically math out correctly, both with your energy manipulation and your drop manipulation in order to get the maximum value to boost your energy far ahead of your opponent's curve. So let me explain a realistic scenario. Let's just say you went second. Your second turn with your energy marker, you play Jero's Lab, okay? Because you'll charge for your first turn, you'll charge for your second, and you'll be at three, okay? So you charge, you go down to two. You ramp for a turn, okay? And this is where Vegeta will be missed, so we'll not talk about him for a second. So next turn, you go into three, you ramp, you go to four. Now you'll be at five, which is where Turles comes in. So at five energy, okay, if you play lab to put a card in, then play Turles, which will ramp you a card active and give you a 30k critical. The next turn, you'll be at Brawly. And you'll be at Brawly plus one because of Jero's lab. If you went first and you play Jero's lab on curve, which this card is an extension of Jero's Lab. The next turn, you go into four. You ramp with one rested, go to five, play Vegeta, grab another card, go to six. Next turn, you're at seven for Gohan. Against yellow, the entire board is subject to death. Okay? Following both of those curve lines that I just explained, you're at three, okay? You go to uh you you go into your third turn, you ramp, you go to four, next you're at five. Okay. Uh you play down, uh so you're at three, take an energy marker, go into three, tap, go to four, play down what you're gonna play, cantrips or whatever, maybe a twenty um uh twenty K Android eighteen, what have you, right? You're just playing around your opponent's board, trying to do what you can. When you go to play Turles, he'll put you at six. 
When you go to play Vegeta, he'll put you at six. So the curve of you having the energy marker is busted. And here's the other thing. And I, I didn't really talk about this, but I, I guess I should. Let's say that you save the energy marker and you don't play Jero's Lab on curve immediately. You save the energy marker for four. This is where Vegeta really shines. So you save the energy marker for turn the third turn when you're at four energy. You then activate Jero's Lab, right? Boost you from four to five. And then the next turn, you can play Turles, you can play Vegeta, go to six, ramp, go to seven, following turn eight. And now you're in Brawly territory. And you are there faster than any other deck in the game. Okay? Let's say that you wanted to do the Turles, the Turles line. If you didn't go first, you, you played Jero's Lab on curve. You get to, you play it on three, at four energy, you played, you tap, go to five, Vegeta go, puts you at six. Now, this card that you played in the interim to draw a card and pitch a card gets immense value because now every time she sings for 20, she's going to draw a card. Your leader also, if it's awakened, then becomes a 30k. So these two cards mixed with this one are busted. Because mathematically, you're basically going to be at seven when your opponent on normal curve is entering into turn four. In minimum, you'll be at six most of the time, right? So if you played Jero's Lab, you tapped for, um, you played Jero's Lab with your energy marker, okay? So you're down to two, you go up to three, ramp, go to four. Next turn, you go to five, Jero's Lab ramps you to six. Play Turles, go to seven. Next turn, you're eight. Play Vegeta, go to seven. You have one energy open, and next turn, you go to eight. So you get to six incredibly fast, and if they're fast at you and awaken your leader, now your leader gets to pressure the uh, fast cards that were attacking you at 30,000, which is insane value. Because if you play Vegeta, like against Yellow, you get to challenge a card with attack. You get to challenge a card with 30,000 pressure. You also get to pitch to kill a card. And trust me, we'll start getting dead cards in our hand a little bit. Or cards that we want to throw into our drop. Cards we don't mind going to our drop if we can get it back. So there's just a lot of value here out of these cards. And this is where the deck really shines and comes together. Because synergistically... If you see these cards, and I have yet to really have like a brick game with this because it's green, it's really hard to brick with green. Um, the lab plus everything I just described literally puts your entire opponent's game plan on the back foot. Um, next, on to two more androids that we play. We play 16 for the Gohan. For the decks that cannot minus this, so aka red, or can outright KO with an effect. If the Gohan is in our drop, it's free. Like, it's a free life and a 35k beat stick, which is something we desperately will take any day. Um, against, like, rush matchups that want to, like, put beat you down early, the 35k play can be very, very strong, especially if you have Gigantic Meteor for defense. And if this card absorbs an attack and plays a card and, and grants you a life like it did yesterday, there's just nothing your opponent can do. I've, there's several times where I've been awakened and went back up to five life. Like, it's just really strong. It's really, really good. Uh, so uh, let me explain what they do. So this is a blocker that uh, when KO'd, uh, you play up a Sun Gohan with a cost of childhood with a cost of six. Sun Gohan childhood. And then on play, add up to one card from the top of your deck to your life area. And then a six drop 35k is nothing to sniff at. Uh, moving on to our boss cards. We played two Android 17 and 18. Two Sun Gohan Childhood, uh, Seeker Air, and four Brawly. Okay. You have to basically play, in my opinion, these cards for a number of reasons. Number one, if they're dead in the matchup or you think that they're not going to be fast, you can just charge them. Number two, they're very flexible on what you want to use them for. Okay, they all serve a purpose. This strong, this card is incredibly strong against yellow. 
This card is also very strong against yellow, and it's a double strike that can help you finish the game. This card is just broken. It's the only card, like, in the game that can, like, out itself. So you have to play four of it. Because you don't want to be caught in a green mirror playing Brawly, and then they play Brawly, and then you don't have a Brawly to play back. So you have to play four of them. But the board wipe is massive. I got my one of my opponents yesterday to protect the same card and expend three cards out of their hand to protect it, and then I just dropped Gohan. And I was at nine energy, so I had two card, two energy back with two gigantic meteors and a couple super combos to defend myself, which is just insane. Um, this card right here gets the best value out of any deck in the game in this deck. The reason is twofold. It is an Android, so it can be ramped. So if it's dead in your hand and you, or you have another one in hand, you can cycle it with the 18 or auto charge it. And if you cycle it with the 18, it is a free ramp target for both Vegeta, Troilus, as well as your field spell. Secondly, uh, this is going to be abused the most in this deck in finishing power. Because basically, Gigantic Meteor takes this to an immediate 65,000. And then it'll be 90,000 with two. And because you ramp consistently every turn, like remember when I described to you when you're at seven energy on the following turn? Well, if you're at seven energy at the next turn, that means you ramp, go to eight. The following turn after that, you'll be at 10. So if you play this card at 10 energy, you have four energy open. You can play like a cantrip or two and then dump double gigantic meteor or triple gigantic meteor and just pump this card to absurd numbers. So if they have like two or less life, it's curtains. Same thing with Brawly, right? If they, if they like Brawly hates this card because you can leave them at five life and then windmill slam this card down, hit them down to two and then say on the following turn, uh, cause like they're gonna have to awaken Play Gohan or die. Or out this card. And if when they go into that following turn, if they're not at eight to play Brawly and they can't out the card, they lose. It's just an automatic losing position. This card is so good that I've considered cutting one of these just for the, another copy of this. But they all have their value. Gohan, on play, you can discard a card and then KO your opponent's entire board, five or less, and then... Um, this is something that, uh, I've learned to do a lot from the Sim. You don't have to activate that effect. So this can be just play seven, have a 50 K beat stick. It's really insane. And then Brawly BR, I don't think I need to talk about that. Anybody that's played this card game knows that this card is the most powerful card in the game and it's not close. Uh, the 45 K double, like dual attacker that basically, um, draws a card and gets rid of any card in the game outright. It's incredibly broken. So... Um, that is our top end that we're hyper ramping to the entire time. In the aggro matchups, well, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about matchups here in a second because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how you need to sequence the deck. But um, uh, we play four super combos and four gigantic meteors. Um, they're just really strong. Um, gigantic meteor is too busted to not play, bottom line. And then King Vegeta is King Vegeta. Uh, yeah, he's just good. He's just just a super combo. Like, every other super combo in the game is good. Um, but Gigantic Meteor is good both offensively and defensively, which um, us being a 20k leader because I'm used to playing Brawly so much, uh, this this card going to 45,000 is really strong, especially against Goku Black. When they think they can just swing 140, uh, 140k swing at you and then uh, not combo a 5k, uh, that helps a lot because Meteor just gets to get over it, which I'm really spoiled with Brawly because getting up to 50,000 is like really good. And then last, uh, these are two tech cards, but I'm probably going to cut them for just two crit 17s because they're 10Ks, they're two drops, and they're androids. Um, this is also an android, so this is also rampable, but um, I-Beam. And this is a card that like I had been testing a lot on on the sim, and I played it in... Uh, I played it yesterday, um, but I didn't run into Frieza. This card really dumpsters Frieza's low end. So if the early game, they like get out to the races with like a lot of cantrips 
or in the mirror, if they play a lot of cantrips, our red plays like Whis and Roshi and they want to like take a life and minus one of your cantrips, all this other stuff, I-Beam basically just deletes them. KOs two of your opponents, one cost battle cards. So it's, and it's an Android. So it's got a lot of value, but this is a card that I would honestly probably cut for more combo power in the deck. Um, just because we're hyper ramping to cards like Gohan and um, Vegeta, who can also kind of do like the same thing that this does. You'll get to it pretty quickly. And then Brawly, like, and then the six drop has the ability to KO two cards through your list. So this card is probably not as necessary. I kind of probably overvalued the card. Um, and it's bricky. Like, obviously, if you take this off of one of your last lives, like I did yesterday against Goku Black, it's not something you want to see. Um, but, you know, uh, having, like, the two crit 17s could be really strong. So, just food for thought. Um, these could also be big bang attacks, because if you big bang attack Gohan, they're, they're crying and dying inside. And you basically get free big bang attacks every turn because of your field spell. But it does put you one behind, so, like... You're just ramping properly on curves, so to speak. Um, but that's pretty much it for my Android's deck. Let me tell you kind of how you need to play the deck. Because a lot of people are going to make a lot of mistakes and assume that because you can attack your opponent's leader or your opponent's leader's attacking you, that you can just take that or take that damage or swing at them free. So because of the way the, the turn of Dr. Duro's lab works, unless it's played on turn two, okay? Dr. Duro's labs on that interim curve of them going into three energy uh, is a little bit scary because you basically aren't committing any bodies to the board simultaneously if they've already kind of built up a board with like a cantrip or two or something else, they have like a lot of combo power and you just basically dedicate your turn to playing that and drawing a card. So board control is key. If your opponent has decided to swing at you with anything, you will never attack the leader. You will always attack that card. In the red matchup specifically, if they want to play down Weeses and whatever have you to get at your cards, all you want to do is swing at whatever you're swinging at, whether that be leader, and combo the card immediately. It comes up especially a lot with this card, right? This card specifically, I don't mind if I combo it. And honestly, it doesn't even matter if I do or don't. But if I can prevent a damage from my opponent in combo, I will. So if I play any of these cantrips, I am immediately comboing out of almost every 15k swing. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be crit, could be normal. The reason is because if Lab gets online, we get to our end game way faster than any other deck in the game. And with that, the more life we have, by the time I start dropping brawlies, the far worse this is going to be for you. So this leader really does have a lot going for it. The lab really is insane. It's the whole reason to play the deck in the first place. But it's insane. Like, it, it is really, really strong. Because double ramping at that Turles... Vegeta Apex, and let's say that like they're aggressive to you and you get to awaken. Everything that's turned sideways is getting 30,000. Every Then when you play Turles, I don't even swing at my opponent's life. If they're not awakened, I'm attacking everything else, giving me another turn to get to 7, 8 energy. And then 9 or 10 the following turn. Or 9, most likely 9. 10. Yeah, it, it's just insane. Uh, it honestly is. And once you see the deck in action, you kind of understand how the intricacies of it all like mesh together and gel really strongly. 
and the filter effect from like Android 20, uh, Android 20, I keep saying 20 because she's 20K power, but like Android 18, like let's say you have Lab in hand, you play the two drop Android 18, uh, let's say you have six plus energy, you draw a card, you put a Lab either from your, if you draw a Lab, you put it in your energy or you pitch it because then you can ramp it to your energy. So you got rid of the dead card and drew a different card in this place. And then you get to swing and draw another card. And then you get to swing with your leader and draw another card. And now your opponent has to get rid of that card. Otherwise, it's going to be very bad. And even if they do, then you play the 17 on the next turn. And you can get it back and then draw more cards. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, um, the, the six drop. The six drop, it, again is a massive control piece. Like if your opponent has only three cards on the board, like let's say against like UI Goku, they play down at turn four when you're going into seven or seven energy. Let's just say that you're going to cap at seven for the turn. You could get to eight, but it's one of them's rested. So you have only seven available energy and you want to save one energy back for whatever play that they have. Because you have gigantic meteor in your hand. You can play down the six drop, KO two of their Gokus and swing into the last rested card. It's broken against crit leaders, right? When you play a bunch of cantrips, especially like against Goku Black, you play a bunch of cantrips. If I play two of these cards or two of these cards on the board, the only thing I'm doing is guaranteeing that your 20k crit is nullified. These cards drew their cards. Their value is already there. They might as well be combo to protect my, my super combos that constantly get critted out of my life from crit swings. Same thing with this. They play a 15k crit card. Combo. You're playing a green mirror. They swing 15. Combo. Because the reality is, is that as soon as you get to 6 energy, all their cantrips start dying. And I-beam is really strong into the green mirror. It's part of the reason why it's like so broken. Like They play like double Goku... Or Gohan Goku, and then all of a sudden, like, I-Beam takes out both of them, and now whatever swing at face, they have to take it or combo card. Right? They can't just not take it. They now have to take a card out of their hand, which is really, really good. And so, the crit swing, same thing. Like, if I have Dr. Dro's Lab in my hand, this card just auto gets out of a 20k. Auto gets out of 20k. Auto gets out of 20k. It doesn't matter that I have this card in my hand. I will just combo. And you're like, well, what about my low hand size? Like, what what, like, what about that? Here's the thing that's insane. The Android 18 draws when you get to six or more energy. So you will have an engine to replenish your hand. Probably draws. This leader draws. You have cantrips that draw. So you can see a lot of cards really quickly. And you can, like, refill your hand back up. When you awaken, you draw a card. So you're going to get cards back. But your energy is going to be massive, and you want though you want to get to to the filter of those cards so that you can eventually blow your opponent away with your big bombs. I wish there was some better androids. I know we're going to get some, like the incredibly stupid one that's like tap four on tap three. Don't know whose idea that was, but that's insane. Uh, it's like sack two energy that is rested and then put three energy for three cards from your drop in your energy. Yeah, that card's, that card's nuts. I mean, that card coupled with um, destructive strength is going to be literally absurd. But all that to say, like, this deck has an insane amount of, of potential, but you have to know the matchup and play it with precision. Like, red is very scary against this deck because you have 30k power on attack, but you're still a 20k leader. And you're not like blue Vegeta, which takes a lot of its life early and then beats them down and recycles uh, those cards in combo, right? That's just not the way that you play. But if you pilot it correctly, you can raffle stomp most decks that are slow in the game. Like absolutely stomp them out of existence like the difference between going second and first with goku black for example is immense it's immense um like cooler same thing now cooler is a little bit frightening because of like raccoon into genyu and everything else 
but on the following turn, if I get to six energy, right, if I've ramped correctly, I get to six or seven, Gohan will wipe the entire board. Doesn't even matter what it is. All I have to do is just not die. So, yeah. Um, take, take your time if you play this list. I would cut the I-beam for maybe another couple 17s. Um, I, I'm, I'm not big on the 18, but I don't know. Maybe you could play her to, like, the 18 trend drop. That's a 3 that, like, recycles energy. You could maybe do that. That could be good because you could <clears throat> maybe flip a card to your hand that's charged that would be really good for you to have. Like, maybe that would be a, a good tech choice to try. I, also, I just like crit. So crit swings are fun, and they're also auto attack bait. My opponent will attack it immediately, which means they're not attacking my life. Which means I get another turn to basically do anything, or at least one attack that I have to stave off. Unless you're red, then you just kill the card with, like, Goku SR. So, uh, look forward to the Beerus deck profile coming soon. Thank you so much for watching my Android deck profile, and I will see you guys in the next one. This is Marcus from TCG Discussions, signing off. Laters.